Alright, welcome back to CAD e Tutorials on Revit 2012. We're talking about levels in the last tutorial and just wanted to show you a few more things. When you do create a level, just be careful, you know, if you're in the level command, if you'll notice as you create levels, the command is still active. So if you do it to create one level and start to try to pick the pan around, you're going to be creating a bunch of extra levels that you probably didn't want to create. So just look up here at the options bar to make sure that you're out of the level command or in it if you want to be in it. Um, hit escape a few times or hit the modify button to get out of the command. I know a lot of times people will create a level and go to move and they're actually creating more levels so just be uh, conscious of that. I'm just going to go ahead and undo these. Show you a couple more things. Now when you want to create a level that does not have any floor pans associated with it, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, for instance, if I have a height of something here, maybe a, um, a platform or something, and I don't want to actually have a floor plan for it, I can copy a level. And when you copy a level, you'll notice it creates a level, but this is black. Just like the one that we had deleted earlier for the basement level. That does not have a floor plan associated with it. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to actually create a level, and if you'll see here, make new plan, you can uncheck that and when you make your level it will not have a floor plan associated with it and you can tell again because it's black right there um, and of course I believe I showed you this before but I'll do it again if you want to open the second floor from an elevation you don't have to come here and open it up in the project browser you can just double click on the level head because it's blue and it'll open up the second floor or whatever floor you clicked on and another thing I wanted to show you if you're creating a level it will, by default, if you want to make a view plan, it will also create a ceiling plan by default. So you can come here to plan view types and you can pick which one you want it to create. If I just want to create a floor plan, I can do a level and now level 11 will only be a floor plan. It did not create a ceiling plan. So those are a couple of options that you have. And of course the last option you see is the offset. If I know I want this level to be 10 feet above the last level. I can do a 10 foot offset and then draw this level right here and you can see it's drawing it 10 feet higher automatically. So if I already know what my offset's going to be I can go ahead and type it in there and not have to adjust it here. So those are a couple of things about levels. Uh, last thing I want to show you, what if um, I'll go ahead and take this level 9, what if I wanted to go ahead and make this into a level that has a floor plan? Well, that's pretty easy to do as well. You can just go to view, go to your plan views, floor plan, and you can make a floor plan out of this as I clicked on floor plan and I can pick which level I want to make into a floor plan. Level 9, hit OK. Of course it opened it up by default so I'll just close it and then now you can see level 9 has the blue marker and there it is right there, level 9. So that's how you can make a level that is not associated with the floor plan. I'll go ahead and create a floor plan out of it. And there you go. That's a little something about levels. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo all this because I don't want all those levels in our project. I just wanted to show you about levels. Now levels are views, as I mentioned before. So that's the first type of view. The next type of view I'm going to show you is going to be sections. So let's go ahead and open the first floor up. And I'm just going to close this down. So say you want to draw a section marker. No big deal. You've got your section call out right here. There's also one up here in the quick access toolbar. And you can have different types of sections. You can name them, for instance, um, well, let me show you this first. If you draw a section, we're just going to cut a section right here. Now, if you notice my section is facing the wrong way, not a big deal. I can flip it right there. I want to draw a section right through my bathroom. And this is the extents of my section. So I can pull this in. And it's that simple. We have a section. And notice that this head, just like the other heads, are blue. So I can double click on that. And it opens my section up. Um, put it on medium detail. Get a little bit more detail with the walls. So there you can see your tub, your toilet, your vanity, your sink, the walls we have put in. We don't have a second floor yet. They're just cutting through my window. And as simple as that. 
Now notice your levels show up on all your sections. And so we would have to go through each level, since these are view specific, when you do the break line. And we would have to break it here as well. Move this around. But all your levels are already there. The other thing about sections, if you'll notice, I'll go back to my floor plan. If I was to click on an elevation that's perpendicular to my, I'm sorry, parallel to my level, my section shows up there as well. So they show up in all views basically that they need to show up in. That's how smart Revit is. And you can always hide these if you don't want to see sections in your view. You can easily come here, right click, hide in view that element or even that category if you don't want any sections and it's gone and it's just hidden. But if you'll notice the section, is still there. And one more thing I want, and you can hide anything in a view, and we'll get to that later. That's how you create your um, your sheet sets by hiding and, and, and revealing what you want what you want seen. One more thing about sections that makes them great: these are live views. So if I said, you know, I really want this, and I'll do this in a split screen. We'll get rid of this elevation. Say I really wanted to slide this toilet over a little bit. Uh, let's go towards the tub to create a little area here for something. I don't know. You notice it highlights in both areas, and I still get my temporary dimension. Say I wanted that to be four feet. Well, it moves. This is all live. It's not like an AutoCAD section where it's generated. This is a live cut of your building, and you can notice that that toilet moved. And I can do it more. I can move it over here just a little more um, more of a movement so you can see it better. So sections are a great way if you have a complicated building sometimes you can't get to a certain area to see it in an elevation sometimes it's hidden behind something you can draw a section right through it and draw in the section as well. So that's another good thing about um, Revit. Now of course this shows the crop view already on. Another thing in sections and in elevations that I had mentioned is annotation crop when now that that's on, you see when I highlight over the crop view, that little dash line, that's my annotation. Anything outside of there, even if it's text, will not show up. So you could put notes and stuff out here if you wanted to. Turn on the annotation crop, they will not show up on your sheet set. They will actually disappear in this view. Then when you turn it off, of course, you'll be able to see everything. So there's sections. Pretty simple. Um, the other thing about a section is when we get into detail components, and it's not so much on this section, say you did a structural section and we're going to do what's called detail components and we'll get into that later. I just wanted to let you know or bring to your attention before you start detailing your sections out with detail components make sure that's where you want the section to be because if I had all this full of detail components like how the wall was put together and, and different things and then I came over here and said you know I want this section to be a little further down all that would be gone. So just be careful make sure you get the sections exactly where you want them before you start detailing them out and if you'll notice also like I said this section is live so as I move this section you can't really notice it because of the way the restroom is but let me flip this section and you'll notice it flips automatically so this is now updated to the flip section these are all live views so there's your section and if you want to keep it in place you just type in PN while it's highlighted and you see this little pin right here, now that section is pinned. And what pinned mean is, means is, you see I'm trying to move it, I can't. So once I get it where I want it, it's always a good idea to pin it. And you can pin section lines, you can pin these reference planes, actually if I know that that's where I want to keep them. Type in PN, type in PN, now they're pinned as well. And I can always just un unpin them, and then pin them back, no big deal. But now these will not move. So if you know if something's where you want it as far as a section or a reference plane, go ahead and pin it. That way there's no way that you can grab it accidentally and move it. So there's your sections. Um, another thing that you can do in a section, and this doesn't have anything to do with our project, but let me go ahead and grab this wall here. I can edit the profile of this wall. And if you'll notice, I have this little pink line or magenta line. That's the profile of the wall. Let me make this bigger. And this is another reason you would use sections. You would draw a section if you need to profile, edit the profile of a wall. And I can make the top profile of this wall do pretty much anything I want it to do. I can make it, you know, curve around. And 
And then I can put some voids in here. I'm just doing this arbitrarily. Now it has to be a closed profile, so this line right here and this line right here cannot exist at the same time. So I need to trim this line back. And there we have it. Now if I finish that profile, there's my walls profile now. And you can see how that wall looks. It's got holes in it if I went to a 3D view. This is great for doing, you know, soffits, and, or not soffits, but um, cornice work and stuff like that. Or if you have just some weird, crazy wall, you know, I've got holes in the wall now. But if I wanted some crazy shaped wall, it's as simple as just editing the profile. For the top of the wall, I can edit the sides and any part of the profile I can edit. And then when I finish it, there's your wall now. So that's a very easy way. You know, in AutoCAD, we would have to do a bunch of um, extrusions and subtractions and booleans and it's just a big big pain I did that in about 10 seconds no big deal and of course I can also reset my profile and boom my walls back to normal so that's another thing you would use sections for so their sections pretty pretty simple there's also different types of sections like I had mentioned let me go back to my first floor so if I click on that, you can see that is a building section. I also have detail, I have wall sections. So let's go ahead and hit the section marker. And this time we'll pick wall section. And then we'll just cut a section right here through this wall. Now I have a wall section. If I click on that, and then change it to medium um, detail level, sorry. Now you can see the components of my wall. Now this is, you know, this is just my brick, air gap, jip, there's my stud. Go ahead and go to thin lines. You can see there's also a jip out here. And this is where you would get into detail, detail components and actually show your brick work. That just lays right on top of the wall in this view only. And that's how we build walls. And we'll get into that later, but I just wanted to show you that. And again, with a wall section, all your levels come in again. So you can have your heights and I can, I could even just hide these three in the middle and instead of hiding by category, which takes everything out, I can just hide those elements. And now I've got my foundation and my parapet, which gives me my height on my wall. And actually, if I wouldn't even want to do that, I would want to do leave the first floor and take the foundation off. So let's do that real quick. So now it shows finished floor at zero, parapet at 21 foot three. There's my wall height. So there's wall sections. And then you've also got detail sections. We'll go back to the first floor again. And we'll cut a detail section, detail view. And we'll do it through the door. And there's a detail section. Again, double click on it. And that is actually looking at my door. Move this up a little bit. There you go. Now what a detail section is doing, if you'll notice, it's cutting through my door, and there's my wall on top, there's the actual door assembly. And again, levels come in. This is my crop view, you know, if my crop view does not make it up to the correct level, it's not gonna show it, it's not gonna pull that level in. So if I go below those two top of the roof and the parapet level, it's not gonna show them at all. And one more neat thing about sections, say this is too long of a section, I just wanted a quick detail. I can break this section right here and then this little arrow shows up. You see these little arrows right there? I can move this up and close it up. And then I can go ahead and put a break line in there. Now of course I'm not really showing anything below the foundation, but I can easily crop that higher. And then once I drag them together, you see a warning? It just puts it all back together again. So. That's how you crop your sections. I want to put this one up a little higher. There we go. And then if I move that up now, I can cut the middle out. And that's how you put your how you uh, decrease the size of your sections there. So that goes. Um, that's how you split a section. So there's a little bit more about levels and sections. Next, uh, we're going to go into the other types of views, which will be callouts, cameras, and then elevations. And if you'll notice, that's what all these views are. That's the different ways to view your model. And I'm just, you got sections. Um, if you notice, this sections was, area was not here. As I create a section, it automatically added a subcategory for me. Put the section in there. 
So if I was to come here real quick, it's the last thing I'll show you, and delete this section, it's going to give me the warning about do I really want to delete the level view section one will be deleted if I hit OK. Now there's no more sections. And of course this is telling me it was a pinned section. So if I deleted all these sections, you'll notice now once these are gone, all my section subcategories are gone because there's no more sections. As I create a section, it creates the category for me if it's not already there. See, there it is, details, view sections. So that's a little bit about sections and elevations. And like I said, next we'll get into the other type of views. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next tutorial.